when I was very young, I went to a local barber shop and I asked for a haircut. So I asked what kind of cut I wanted. I told him I had a flat top. I never got the flat top before, and as he started in on the thing, I got a little uncomfortable with the dress to change. I think that hair was mowing through it. So I said, leave the sides long. He stopped. The equipment went off. He was completely discombobulated. <laughs> I remember him nearly pleading with me to understand the nature of the style, but I insisted. He followed me out the door with a worried look behind his clutter bifocals, saying if I wanted to correct it later, he would do it for free, almost as if he was embarrassed to have been part of such a stylistic debacle. Of course, when I got to school, I realized I made a bad choice. So I went back to the barbershop and let him finish the deal. Let's examine this relationship. We're in a very vulnerable position. Especially on our first encounter, in a very short amount of time, with very few words, we place a great deal of faith on someone to do a job. Ultimately, the control is with the barber who must perform the technical duties necessary to achieve any success whatsoever. You can't shave all the hair off your head and then talk his way to success if you ask for a simple trim. Certainly, you would regain some control in that situation and be able to ask for a refund. Now, the client, however, carries some responsibility in this duet, right? Aside from payment, they must be able to either adequately communicate something specific they're looking for, here's the picture, or place their trust entirely in the guy doing the deal. They must be realistic and understand that quick requirements and high expectations don't often go together. When I get a cut, I usually say to the guy, just make me look professional. I figure, Whatever they're most comfortable doing with my head will result in the best outcome. I've been wrong about it. <laughs> That's why my hair is so thick right now. What is the common goal? It might be succinctly stated as a quick, satisfactory haircut at a fair value to the customer at a rate which makes the effort worth the partner's time. I prefer to phrase it more of a golden exchange. Working together, the barber and the client are attempting to create a situation so that both want to repeat it in the future. Not only do we want to achieve the objective, we want to enjoy the process also. In terms of the end game, rarely is payment not made. And even if you're disappointed, you usually pay, you choose not to return, you might tip less or not at all, you might get upset. The barber might refund your money or offer others some means to rectify the instance. In any of these negative situations, though, there's a feeling of mutual disappointment. Of course, going above and beyond on both sides, lends to the likelihood that the thing's going to happen again, right? If the barber might give you some styling or engage in interesting conversation, you might be engaging yourself. And this makes the stylist job more enjoyable, invoking his or her ability to deliver good quality. I can't tell you how many cheating boyfriend stories I have to sit through. <laughs> so how does this translate to information technology, which is what my job is? 80% of the mistakes found in system testing, 80%, are made in the, what we call the requirements definition phase of the project. And finding a requirements problem during testing on the back end is 19 times more expensive than finding it in the requirements phase in the beginning. As in our metaphor, if the elicitation and the conveyance of the information is successful, things go a heck of a lot smoother. The product looks more like the original vision, the functional aspects are complete. The testing and the quality assurance for our haircut, obviously, is look in the mirror. Does it look like the picture? Are our expectations met? While people may attribute most of the successful outcomes to the technical abilities of the barber, without clear communication of the objective, the vision, the outcome is in doubt, and really the ability is useless. So here's another story. I was part of a team of greater than 20 developers from October to December of 2007. The budget for the project, the website, was $300,000. It's been released, but the cost is now exceeded $2 million. 94 pages of useful but poorly organized information wasn't enough to stop the bleeding. Really, the lack of understanding or the appreciation for the process of how to deliver the, that information to the development team was really the problem. Worse, the contractual agreement that my client had with their client forced them to eat the difference. 1.7 million. 
This translates to me visiting the barber for a $12 haircut. And the barber doing such a poor job of figuring out what I want that it cost him $80 to give it to me. I need to think what kind of haircut I'd end up with that <laughs> situation. Contributing to our comfort and enjoyment is trust. There are things a customer will expect, qualifications, certification licenses, maybe the decor of the establishments we frequent. They all contribute to our ability to trust a person to do a job. Yet, haircuts in salons and website projects and offices have failed more than a few times. For technology projects with major dollars at stake, measurable written requirements that point to specific results help us move the factors of risk and trust to a digestible level. While the damage done from a bad $12 haircut can be rectified in a week or so, given your ability to grow hair. The damage done from poorly initiated IT projects can take a lot longer to resolve and can perhaps cause an entire economy to become paralyzed. Ironically, when I hear the debate over whether we're in a recession or a depression, I attribute some of the reason that we're anywhere to the irresponsibility in the software industry. Not gasoline. And I ask, what are the requirements for depression? What are the requirements for recession? I'm going to leave you with this. Khalil Gibran's prophet tells us of buying and selling, saying, and I can read it, it is in exchanging the gifts of the earth that you shall find abundance and be satisfied, yet unless the exchange be in love and kindly justice, it will but lead some to greed and others to hunger. If you have customers, make sure you're the good barber who opens those lines of communication, educating your customer in order to educate and prepare yourself to do the good work and lead to that open exchange. As a customer, we have a responsibility to promote a good transaction by additionally informing our vendors about our needs, of what we know and what we don't know. If you bring a sense of love and kindness and justice to that cooperative process, you'll find that next opportunity for that golden exchange. It's called repeat business.